Can Iron Man lift the starship? With the super heavy booster and everything? Sounds absurd, of course he can. Or can he? But wait, what if it's not as absurd as it sounds? What if we frame it as a neat little duel? The impossible engineering of Tony Stark versus the very real engineering of SpaceX. All right, everybody, stand down. Suddenly, the question stops being a meme and gets interesting. The starship, stacked on its super heavy, reaches 120 meters tall, basically a 40-story building with Elon Musk's ego on the roof. At launch, it weighs around 4,800 metric tons. 4,800. That's like trying to lift over a thousand luxury electric cars at once, but without a battery warranty. A colossal mass that must remain perfectly still until the last bolt releases and the 33 Raptor engines ignite in a controlled inferno. Yes, the structure is massive, but it's also delicate. Its center of gravity sits so high, it looks like it was designed by someone allergic to balance. Its mass is distributed unevenly turning every centimeter into a precision problem. And the whole assembly must stay motionless until the exact moment of liftoff. Now, if anyone could even try it, that someone would be Tony Stark. But let's be realistic, not with this suit. The Mark VII. Sleek, aerodynamic, built for air combat, rapid deployment, and stylish missile dodging. A masterpiece of design. As long as you don't ask it to be a 120 meter launch support. Lightweight, efficient, elegant, but with a load capacity comparable to a well-specified luxury sedan. We need a different kind of armor, something less refined, more brutal. The Mark 38, Igor, the suit that proves brute force can have class, if you ignore that it looks like a refrigerator with legs. Built to lift structures, hold steel beams, and survive collapses, Igor is part military exoskeleton part hydraulic crane with an attitude. It has no weapons, it has no charm, but it can carry steel like nobody's business. Its lift capacity is estimated between 75 and 100 tons, depending on the attachment point. Much of that force comes from its reinforced central spine. Yes, that huge hump on its back isn't a styling mistake. It's the structural secret. Thanks to a low center of gravity and a stiff design, IGOR is incredibly stable. But of course, there's a catch. It relies entirely on its onboard generators, and it wasn't built to hold static loads for long durations. Its operating philosophy? Lift, hold briefly, release, and go. Not the kind of suit you leave on standby all afternoon. So, can it lift the Starship? Trying to lift 4,800 tons with a suit rated for 100 tons is... A poetic way of saying goodbye, physics. But what if we don't lift it? What if we just need to hold it? And this is where the real world steps in. SpaceX doesn't hire superheroes to support their rockets. They use steel, hydraulics, and engineering precision. The Starship sits on the orbital launch mount, a system with 20 structural supports that surround the booster. Those arms that look fixed? They're actually retractable. They latch onto the rocket and keep it steady, even in the winds of Boca Chica, Texas. They don't have artificial intelligence. They don't have thrusters, but each can withstand up to 250 tons of vertical load. And they do it without overheating, without complaining, and without asking for an ARC reactor recharge. They're engineered to tolerances under a millimeter. Failures? None. Error margin? Practically zero. They can hold motionless a structure over 100 meters tall while it's being filled with liquid methane at minus 161 degrees Celsius and oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius. All that while waiting to fire 33 Raptor engines, whose combined thrust is, in practical terms, phenomenal. Yes, it sounds like movie exaggeration. It is exaggerated. And it's real. And that's what makes SpaceX impressive. They make, with steel and bolts, what Stark could only dream up in CGI. Now then, could a single Igor replace one of those supports? Let's compare. The real support claws are over 2 meters tall and weigh between 10 and 15 tons of solid steel. Igor stands 2.5 meters tall, weighs roughly 4 tons, and has more joints than an anxious transformer. 
In raw push, IGOR might look stronger, but in passive stiffness, thermal precision, and environmental resilience, the industrial support beats it without moving a finger. Because the real power of those supports isn't brute force. It's the ability to never fail. But what if we used 20 IGOR suits, one per support? On paper, brilliant. In practice, a recipe for chaos. Igor wasn't meant to sit perfectly still. Its servo motors lack prolonged structural locking. Its power source is limited. And the tiniest desynchronization between suits could create micro oscillations, enough to make a 4,800 ton rocket start doing the Macarena. Even if every unit worked flawlessly, they'd be operating at the edge. And if, by some miracle, the rocket liftoff occurred with Igor's still attached, the heat, vibration, and pressure would send them flying farther than any of Stark's demo fails. So, how many IGOR suits would we actually need? Accounting for load, redundancy, thermal margins, and the classic, just in case, you'd need at least 60 Mark 38s. 60 perfectly synchronized suits, just to do what 20 purpose-built supports already do without breaking a sweat. And that's without counting logistics, power, maintenance, supervision, and spare parts every time a joint overheats. So, for this first test, can Iron Man lift the Starship? Number. Can IGOR do it? Definitely not. Could 20 IGORs replace SpaceX's system? Only if Elon Musk signs off on an error margin the size of Mars. And with 60? Maybe. But it'd be easier, and less dramatic, to build another starbase. And yet, not all is lost, because Stark always has an ace up his sleeve. What do you do when your big green friend decides to go full nuclear meltdown? Easy. You build a suit the size of a house. Meet the Mark 44, or as its only true fan calls it, the Hulkbuster. A masterpiece of engineering that looks absolutely ridiculous, until Hulk decides that traffic lights, office buildings, and public safety are optional concepts. This suit doesn't fly gracefully. It doesn't sneak around. It doesn't even pretend to. It's a tank with fists. Roughly 10 tons of I warned you. Standing over 4 meters tall and about as subtle as a meteor strike. The Hulkbuster was built for one purpose. Stopping things that physics politely suggests should not exist. And for that, it's magnificently overprepared. Monstrous hydraulics capable of bending steel beams like soda straws. Triple-layered armor made from titanium, gold, and a few materials Tony probably stole from a classified lab. Its servo motors? Industrial grade. Powerful enough to twist a locomotive like a pretzel. And because Stark doesn't do half measures, it comes with a modular system that lets him swap entire arms mid-fight. Yes, mid-fight. Because apparently... Punching the Hulk once isn't a one-and-done situation. And speaking of repulsors, this suit has 16. Not to fly, to survive. Every repulsor doubles as a brake, an anchor, a counterweight, or, when the situation calls for it, a rocket punch. But here's the real flex. The Hulkbuster doesn't park in a garage. It drops from orbit, delivered by a satellite system called Veronica. Why Veronica? Because Bruce Banner's ex-girlfriend was named Betty. And in peak Tony Stark fashion, he named the system that keeps Hulk under control after the other girl. Genius. Petty. 100% Stark. So no, the Hulkbuster isn't just another suit. It's a nuclear response. With elbows. But how strong is it really? Based on its little argument with Hulk and the objects it casually throws around, the Hulkbuster can lift somewhere between 250 and 300 tons. That's about three times more than Igor, the Mark 38, but still nowhere near the 4,800 tons of SpaceX's Starship and its Super Heavy Booster. Can it lift that? Number. Not even if Hulk himself plugged his rage straight into the arc reactor. Starship plus Booster equals 4,800 metric tons. Hulkbuster? around 300 on a good day, after a motivational speech. So no, 
Lifting the starship isn't happening. Not even as a party trick. But to be fair, it did punch Hulk in the face and walk away like nothing happened. And honestly, that's already more than enough.